what according to you would be the consequences if the government executes and announces the results of a caste census done in 2021 or 2022 how would this impact indian politics to say that india has never had any caste census since 1931 is absolutely untrue since 1951 we have always had complete jati wise enumeration of all the sc and all the sts so one of the prominent demand is to say simply extend it to OBC. To predict as to what would be the stand of the, the stated stand of the government of the day when the Prime Minister has just today heard the delegation would be unfair on my part. I would not be able to predict as to what the government would be saying in the coming days. The government is uh, in fact seized of the matter. It will take its decision. For this complex material, for this complex issue in the Indian caste system, a Rohini commission has been commissioned which is yet to submit its report. It is particularly about कैटेगराइजेशन ऑफ़ द कास्ट सिस्टम मुझे बहुत प्रसन्नता है कि 27 परसेंट का आरक्षण ओबीसी का नीच में हुआ है जो अब से 30 साल पहले पॉसिबल नहीं थे हम भी नहीं कर पाए थे दूसरा 35 परसेंट मिनिस्टर बैकवर्ड कास्ट के बने जिनके अभिनंदन पूरी दिल्ली में हो रहे हैं ये भी जाति के आधार पर हो रहे हैं और और मुझे मैं हवा का रुख जान करके आपसे कहना चाहता हूं कि 101 प्रतिशत जातिगत जनगणना होगी क्योंकि आप संवैधानिक प्रक्रियाओं को नहीं रिजेक्ट कर सकते सबसे महत्वपूर्ण बात यह है कि जो सामाजिक संरचना जिसमें जाति महत्वपूर्ण है और और बहुत सारे आयोग पहले आयोग से लेकर पहला पिछला आयोग से लेकर चाहे कालेलकर कमेटी रिपोर्ट हो या मंडल का आयोग हो ये सब आयोगों ने इस चीज को माना कि जाति एक महत्वपूर्ण इकाई है समाज को समझने के लिए और जो गैर बराबरी है उसमें इसका बहुत बड़ा योगदान है। First of all, I think people like Mr. Yadav, for whom I have a great deal of respect, should first question that why are we in this situation after uh, you know uh, 70 years of independence that we have to still dissect the society on caste lines and we could not move towards the vision of what uh, Dr. Ambedkar and others had proposed. And we have actually voiced the social, uh, 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 you know, the progress has been so tardy and for that every political party is to blame. In your view, is a caste census desirable? And if not desirable, is it inevitable given that caste is the reality of Indian politics today? I would say that I cannot understand a single earthly reason why when the constitution has mandated affirmative action for OBCs at 27 percent mm -hmm. you will stand against a caste census which enumerates their number, their size, you want to know their size and other demographic details including their educational and economic status. It begs my imagination to understand why you would do it. You've done it for SCs and STs for 70 years in the most detailed manner. There is no reason why you can't do it for OBCs. I uh, am of the opinion that, you know, we do not want annihilation of caste. We want discrimination to go away. If there is no casteism, if there is no discrimination, then let the caste remain. What is the problem? No, no, but sir. why it is has becoming desirable? Because mm -hmm. class as well as you know poverty, these two indicators are not sufficient to understand the discrimination which exists in the society. The fear with BJP and Congress is that once the numbers comes out, which is going to be definitely much more than uh, the percentage of reservation which has been offered to OBC in the central government job. Mm -hmm. So the fear is that the regional parties might take advantage of those numbers and start playing politics around that. And what will, what will be the politics? Mm -hmm. The politics is going to be, look, you have provided reservation of at the rate of 15% to the Dalits and 7.5% and to Adivasis and that is, uh, in, uh, that goes along with their share in national population. So what is the logic of giving 27% to, to 27% reser reservation to OBC when their share in country's population is higher. So I do agree that some, a lot of politics is going to be played around the numbers if there is a caste census and if we come about, if we know the numbers. How serious is the resistance? Can this band of men 
three commanders, 8,000 to 10,000 fighters, can they stand up to Pakistan back Taliban? Yes, they can, uh, Gaurav, because I have seen Ahmed Shah Masood standing. And Ahmed Shah Masood also had great odds against him. There was actually the whole lot of uh, uh, Soviet army. And he stood against, uh, I mean, against them. The Taliban tried to take him. But there is a spirit in this valley. That spirit is something which cannot be broken. And his son is an inheritor of that spirit. They have also brought with them uh, uh, Amrullah Saleh, who again is a born fighter. They are, they are very brave men. Uh, they have uh, tales of valor behind them. But, you know, it's an unequal fight. And I will tell you why in my uh, assessment it's an unequal fight. You know, during, in 1995-2001, Panchir Valley was not cut off. They had uh, access to Tajikistan. Uh, Northern Alliance was generally being supported uh, by India, by Russia, by Iran. Now they are surrounded. They don't have access. They, will, they cannot have uh, uh, supplies. So that is the very big problem. And the numbers, whether it's 7,000 or 10,000, uh, reports are that they can last the winter, they can even manage till the summer, but then what? Uh, the Taliban can just choke them there. I was working in Afghanistan like uh, two years in a police officer with the US Army. So now, uh, I cannot say anything, but the situation is like everyone is confused. Like everyone, uh, they cannot say anything. Um, uh, I know that. Like as uh, everyone sees in the media, uh, I can say about the armies, uh, lacks of armies when there is not, uh, not support with them. If there is not support with them uh, from the president, from the leaders, from the uh, high post people, so. I cannot, uh, I don't think so they can do anything for uh, their country, for their peoples. Uh, that's my idea.